Good evening, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, we'll kick off tonight's uh, Blackhawks media availability with Patrick Kane. Uh, Patrick Kane asked to uh, join us tonight and um, he will be uh, taking questions. So thank you very much, Patrick, for joining us. If you have a question for Patrick, please press the raise hand button on your screen and we will get to you. Our first question will come from Scott Powers with The Athletic. Scott, you can go ahead. Hey, Pat, did you get a chance to watch Kyle Beach's interview and, and if you had any overall thoughts from seeing it? I uh, haven't watched it yet, but um, uh, just, um, you know, terrible situation and uh, very courageous for him to come out and um, let his name be known to the world after everything he went through. Um, yeah, I knew Kyle pretty well from a couple of different training camps um, and um, just uh, seemed like a happy go lucky guy and uh, always, always in a good mood. So um, I think uh, hearing that it was him and uh, with the news and with everything going on, obviously um, feel for him, compassionate for him and his family and uh, um Wish uh, back then we could have done some some different things or knew about some different things that uh, maybe we could have helped him. He had said that he felt like everyone in the locker room knew and that, you know, there were some players he felt, you know, he said they bullied him. W were you aware of that? Is there anything that you you guys could have done differently or how much how much did you know? Yeah, I didn't know anything at the time. And, you know, even uh, even today um, when uh you know, Kyle came out as John Doe. That's the first time I knew that it was, uh, that it was him. So, um, and, uh, as far as like the bullying and, uh, different comments, um, I don't remember any of that either. So, um, listen, I think it was, uh, uh a terrible situation and, um, um, you know, obviously feel, feel for him if, uh, things were getting thrown his way, you know, tough words, bullying, um, uh, different things like that. So, um, you know, definitely feel for him if that stuff happened. We'll go now to Phil Thompson with the Chicago Tribune. Phil, your mic is active. Okay, Phil, uh, we can come back to you. We'll go to Mark Lazarus with The Athletic. Laz, your mark, mic is active. You can go ahead. Hey, Patrick, uh, what were your thoughts as everything that went down yesterday, everything you learned in the report about what management did and, and more importantly, didn't do uh, in 2010? As a player, uh, how did their failure sit with you? Well, it's tough. I mean, you have a lot of great memories from that year. And, um, um, you know, I think just kind of learning the news and how everything went down, um, Probably, I mean, definitely could have been handled handled differently. Um, most importantly for Kyle's sake, but uh, it seemed like the organization had to, you know, do what they had to do as far as uh, making some necessary moves. As far as you know, guys that were with the team back then that were still with the team now and uh, aren't with us anymore. So um, you know, listen, I I knew Stan very well. I know him as a great man. I. Um, he did a lot for me personally, uh, uh, coming into the league and just, you know, over, over the course of my career, I'm sure he probably would have handled things a little bit differently, um, uh, nowadays, but, um, you know, what happened happened in the past. And, uh, I think the organization made the right moves to, to, you know, get the, get the Blackhawks going forward and the right steps and, uh, and making, making sure we're trending forward. Do all these revelations, do they color your memories of that, of that 2010 run in any way? color my memories and like, I mean, does it, does it, does it tarnish it for you in any way? Well, I think you'll, you'll always, uh, you know, have special memories from, from that year. Um, you know, I think the biggest thing was, I think if a lot of us players knew at the time, you know, maybe we could have done some different things. I don't know what we could have done to, to change the situation. Obviously Brad wasn't with us, uh, after that year. Um, and uh, you remember hearing, you know, vaguely some different rumors, but nothing really too into detail what what actually happened and why he left. 
but um, like I said, it was very vague. Um, but I think you always have good memories from that year. And then now with, you know, everything coming to the light, you know, that might maybe overshadow it a little bit. Go now to Ben Pope with the Chicago Sun-Times. Ben, your mic is active. Go ahead. Hey, Patrick. Um, you mentioned that um, you knew uh, Kyle Beach from a few training camps. Just I wonder if you could go more into what your relationship was like with him. No, I just remember, you know, he was drafted the year after me. And uh, I remember um, just going out to eat with him a few times, um, you know, hanging out with him and uh, Akeem Alou as well. Um, us three seemed to be together a lot, especially my second year in the league. Uh, would have been Kyle's first training camp. But um, like I said, just seemed kind of like a happy-go-lucky guy. And uh um, always seem to be in a good mood and joking around with the guys. Have you had a chance to talk to him yet uh, today, or do you plan to in the coming days? Yeah, I would like to. I mean, I don't know. I, I'm sure he probably – I don't know if he wants to hear from us uh, or not, but um, I would like to. I would like to, you know, reach out to him and say that, you know, wish I knew more at that time in that situation – um, if I could have done anything to help him out or not. Um, but, um, obviously he's been living with this a long time and, uh, takes a lot of courage by him to put, uh, you know, his name behind the story. All right. We'll try to go back to Phil Thompson with the Chicago Tribune. Phil, your mic's active. You can go ahead. Hi, right, Patrick. Uh, after hearing the details of the report uh, by Jenner and Block, did it jog your memory with anything? Did you notice uh, the presence of Brad Aldrich during the playoffs and, and then afterwards his absence? Um, yeah, it's such a long time ago. It's hard to, you know, really remember. I don't remember him too much from, uh, from the playoffs or uh, the celebration after. Um, I just remember, like I said before, vaguely that, he was, um, uh, I don't know if he was, he, he was let go or he was moving on from the team to do something else. And we kind of heard some rumors about why that was. And um, that was really it, nothing really definitive. So, um, yeah, maybe that can answer your question, hopefully. Is there anything from the reports or people's comments that you've seen in the media that you agree with uh, or you take issue with? Like, I mean, I mean, the reports a lot, there's a lot in the reports. So I think um, going through it, it's definitely pretty tough to read. Um, I haven't listened to Kyle's interview or anything yet, but I'm sure that's probably tough to listen to as well. But um, yeah, some of the stories were, were pretty tough. We'll take uh, one more question here. We'll go to Charlie Romeliotis from NBC Sports Chicago. Charlie, your mic's active. Go ahead, please. Hey, Patrick, uh, a lot of fans are, are kind of wrestling with, with everything that happened and, and cheering for you guys moving forward. What would you say to them that um, obviously there, there it does feel like a stain on some of those te on that team? Yeah, and you have to accept that, right? I mean, um, there's definitely, uh, you know, that problem that happened in the past. And uh, um, I think fans have the right to look at it the way they want. I think um, the organization under the leadership of Danny and Rocky, um, you know, seem to have done a really good job as far as like setting Jenner and Block uh, in place to investigate and also to release the findings and to make necessary changes. So I think the organization is doing everything they can to move forward and move forward the right way.